Have you ever been inspired to paint a particular photo, got out all your supplies, then sat down ready to begin painting and thought, whoa, where do I even start? If there isn't a tutorial or a step-by-step -step advice all about that same animal with the same lighting, same colors, angles, and croppings, it can be really difficult to figure out how to even begin. My goal in this video is to give you some totally not scary ways to start out a watercolor pet portrait painting and to give you some ideas that will help guide your decision about which approach to use while staring at that blank piece of paper in front of you. The first step is almost always going to be the same no matter what you're painting. Start with a good sketch. There are no right or wrong ways to get a decent sketch, but here are my two favorite ways to do it. Freehand sketch. This method takes the most practice and experience, but if you take careful visual measurements and work slowly, sketching lightly so that your marks can be erased easily, this is a great way to get your sketch on. It also gives you more freedom to adjust or change things from the reference photo to plan your focal point and placement of hard or soft edges. A helpful tip when sketching freehand, print out your reference photo in the same size as your watercolor paper. Having exactly the same size reference image makes it so much easier to translate what you're seeing in the photo to what you're drawing on your paper. My second favorite way to get the sketch on is to use transfer paper, especially when I'm in a hurry. This method is the most stress-free way to get a perfect drawing every time. You do still need to have access to a printer. I like to print my reference image in black and white, place the transfer paper shiny side down between the reference photo and the watercolor paper, then gently trace with a pen or pencil over the top of the reference image. Be careful not to press too hard as it can be difficult to erase the graphite once it's on your watercolor paper. Also, don't trace every detail. Leave areas where you want soft or lost edges untouched by the tracing. Quick caveat before we go on. If you want to try these techniques, awesome. Just be sure to use 100% cotton watercolor paper. Otherwise, your results just won't be the same. The quality of your watercolor paper can make or break your painting. Okay, so you have your sketch. Now what? Watercolor artists have all kinds of tools in their belts when it comes to techniques and approaches, which we can use to get the specific effects we want. Before you dive in, study your image. What kind of animal is it? How would you describe the fur? Long, straight, curly, wavy, short, fuzzy? What colors do you see in the fur? Are there whiskers? Is there going to be a background? Having confident answers to all these basic observational questions will help you decide how to start. Since there are so many different kinds of pets that all might require a different approach, I'm going to narrow it down to four different kinds of pet portraits. The first one is how to start a soft furry pet with a background. Okay, so you've decided your pet portrait is going to have a background. If the fur on the animal is soft and fuzzy, you'll definitely want to start the painting wet and wet. For this wolf painting, I know it's not a pet, sorry, just humor me here. I wanted the fur on the head and neck to look blurry and soft, almost disappearing into the background. To achieve this effect, wet the background area with clean water so that it's glossy wet and extend the water a little into the animal's fur. Drop in your background colors almost up to the fur. The paint will soften naturally into the area you pre-wet. I used the same effect to start my golden retriever portrait painting the dark background first, wet and wet, all in one layer, allowing the paint to bloom and spread right up next to the fur on the ears and neck. Use a round brush to encourage the paint to flow in the direction the fur is growing, and be careful that there isn't too much water in your brush or this will cause backwash. Blocking the background in first is such a confidence booster when it comes to starting a painting. It sets the stage and silhouettes your subject, making it so much easier to stay motivated and just keep going. The second approach is how to start a pet with no background. So maybe you want to do a pet portrait that is isolated on the white of your paper. I do many paintings in this style. This approach is less intimidating than doing a painting with a background for obvious reasons, but it is still important to be intentional about your edges from the very beginning. I like to start almost the same way as a pet with a dark background, except backwards. For this St. Bernard puppy, I still use the wet and wet technique to create soft fur but this time I start with clean water inside the pencil lines of the animal's body, extending the clean water a little beyond. Remember that where your water goes, the paint will flow. You can see the paint will soften and extend a little into the white paper. 
For a short haired animal, you do not need to use this technique, but I still like to start with soft tinted washes, wet and wet, just to get the color down. For this Boston Terrier puppy, I used wet and wet, working in sections. When there are clear divisions of markings, you can take this approach. Paint the white chest first, then the black sides, then the black areas on the face. Having a method and breaking it up into smaller sections can prevent anxiety from creeping in. The third approach I'm gonna show you is how to start long-haired or curly coated animals like this Highland cow or a Yorkie or golden retriever. Animals with complex fur can be the most intimidating. So this is where having a really good sketch is so important. Make sure to make important markings showing specific curls, chunks of fur, and areas in light and shadow. I like to approach these animals more carefully, starting with a very light wash. From there, I slowly build up layers of color, continuing to darken with each subsequent layer. I use a lot more wet and dry methods with curly fur because I want my brush strokes to stay where I put them instead of washing out and softening. Painting these kinds of animals takes a lot of patience, so block out enough time in your day when taking on projects like this. The fourth one I wanna show you is how to start black animals. Painting black in watercolor is very different from painting black in a more opaque medium, like oil or acrylic, because you want your darks to maintain a luminous quality that is so unique to watercolor. Also, you can't exactly paint over your mistakes, so when starting a pet portrait of an animal with dark fur, one really safe approach is to slowly build up to the darkest black in your painting using multiple layers. Just make sure you're only using transparent paints with this approach, just to prevent the layers from looking murky and muddy. To make black and gray, I like to combine indigo and burnt umber, or ultramarine and burnt sienna. For most of my pet portraits, I prefer to mix my own black because it allows me to control the color temperature within my dark tones. For more on painting with black, check out this video. With black pets or dark brown, I like to start with light washes, wet and wet. Areas in light are going to include the most detail, so I try to paint those areas first. In some paintings, like this black lab, I start with light gray washes, and then I do the darkest shadows wet and wet with a loaded brush. Keep in mind that areas in dark shadows reveal the least detail, so it's very satisfying to paint those shadow shapes all in one layer quickly and without overworking them and spend more time with the details on areas that are in the light. Now, white pets require a little more nuance and subtlety, if you're interested in learning more about painting white pets, check out this video. And for more specific advice on how to paint animal whiskers, I have a whole video about that too. That's it for today, but if you found this video helpful, please hit that like button and head over to these other videos all about painting pets in watercolor. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.